So we're now ready to explore a new type of function, quadratic functions. So quadratic functions are polynomial functions of degree two. And in standard form, we define quadratic functions as f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where our leading coefficient a cannot be equal to zero. Now, while this quadratic function is in standard form, if we take this function and complete the square, we can attain an equivalent vertex form. So we'll explore how we complete the square to attain this form shortly, but for now, let's consider the notation. So our quadratic function in vertex form is defined as y is equal to a multiplied by x minus h squared plus k. And now let's make a couple of notes here. These constants a, h, and k are scalars, or constants, they're real numbers. And again, a is our leading coefficient because it's attached to the variable of degree, of degree two. So we know that a cannot be zero, otherwise we'd have a linear function. Now, the vertex for this, for this quadratic function is defined by the ordered pair hk. So with the vertex, this is the turning point of the graph. This is where that graph is changing directions from either decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. So we have the components h, k. Now one note here is regarding this x component. So we say that the x component of our vertex, h equals, excuse me, x equals h, is called the axis of symmetry. And so we call this vertical line the axis of symmetry because our graph or parabola is going to be a perfect reflection across this vertical line. Now, when we are exploring the graphs of parabolas, we need to think about two different cases. So case number one, if our leading coefficient a is positive or greater than zero, so I want you to think to yourself, if you have a leading coefficient that's positive, it's happy, it's a smiling parabola. So it looks something like a smile. And the vertex is going to be down here. This is our turning point. So this is the vertex. This is the turning point of our parabola. We can see this is where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. Now we can see the components, you can see, see that here, that's the x component of the vertex h. And we can see that vertical line, our axis of symmetry. So notice here, pause for a cause and notice how if we fold the parabola across this line, we have a perfect mirror image. Now what about the y component? So from our vertex, we go over to the y axis, here's where we have the value y equals k. So notice here that k is the smallest possible y value, which makes our vertex a minimum. So if our vertex is a minimum point and k is the very smallest possible y value on this graph, we can say that the range y is going to be greater than or equal to our constant k. Now, what about if we have a negative leading coefficient? What happens then? So in case two, we say, if our leading coefficient a is less than zero, so if it's less than zero, it's negative, it's sad, it looks like a frown, and it's concave down. So here is your frowning parabola when your leading coefficient is less than zero. And again, we can see here our turning point the vertex at the ordered pair hk. So the x component of the vertex on the x-axis is down here at h. And again, we can think about the vertical line x equals h to see that axis of symmetry. And again, pausing for a cause here to observe this, we can see if we fold the parabola across that vertical line, it's a perfect reflection of itself. Now here, because we have a, a parabola that's opening downwards or concave down, we can see that our vertex is going to be a maxima. So again, from our vertex here, if we go over to the y-axis, here is where y is equal to k. 
And that's the very largest possible y value that we can have, which is going to tell us that for the range, y in this case is going to be less than or equal to k. So now that we've established some ideas of what these parabolas look like, what the graph of a quadratic function looks like, let's go ahead and establish a strategy for how we're going to graph these. So now that we have established the features of the parabola, the graph of a quadratic function, we need to establish some strategy for sketching these graphs. Now, the following eight steps are going to be specific to the vertex form of our parabola, a times x minus h squared plus k. But I want you to keep in mind that these same rules or this same strategy can be applied to the standard form as well. So our first step is the following. So the first thing that we need to do is to determine how the parabola opens. So to determine if it's opening upwards or opening downwards, we want to think about that leading coefficient. So we have two cases here. Recall that if a is greater than zero, so if a is greater than zero, it's positive, it's a smiling parabola, so the parabola opens upwards. Versus in our second case, if the leading coefficient a is negative or less than zero, it's negative, it's sound, or it's sad, concave down like a frown. So your problem is opening downwards. Now, from these two conditions, we're able to establish the second step in identifying the vertex. Now, if we're using the completing the square form or vertex form of the parabola, we know that our vertex has the coordinates x, y, where x is equal to h, and y is k. Now, the standard form of a quadratic is going to have a slightly different version of the components here for the vertex, but we'll see that shortly. Step three. So finding the x-intercepts is just the same as, it, as the strategy for finding the x-intercepts of a linear function. So let's recall that to find the x-intercepts, we're going to set y equal to zero and solve for x. Now, if we wanted to write this in ordered pair form, since we're going to be sketching a graph, we want to keep in mind that we can rewrite this in the ordered pair form x, zero. And step four, Now, just like with step three, finding the y-intercept of a quadratic function is going to be used the same exact method that we're used to for linear functions. So recall that to find a y-intercept, this time we're going to set x equal to zero and solve for y. And again, since we know our goal is to sketch a graph of this parabola, we want to write our y-intercept in the ordered pair form, zero, y. Now, up until now, these steps one through four here we are establishing what we need to sketch the graph. So the following steps are all going to be based off of our sketch. So to begin with sketching the graph of the parabola, we start simply by plotting the vertex and our intercepts. Now, if you're finding that this is not enough information to give you a good idea of what the parabola looks like, you can create a table of x and y values to help you get a better idea and additional solution points on the graph. Now, steps six, seven, and eight are all going to require us to look at the graph of our parabola. So step six is asking us to identify the axis of symmetry. So keep in mind that the axis of symmetry is the vertical line defined by the x-coordinate of the vertex, or x is equal to h. In step seven, so step seven is asking us to determine if the vertex is a maxima or a minima. So you want to keep in mind the conclusions of how the parabola opens. Notice here that if we have a parabola that's opening upwards, your vertex or turning point here is going to be a minimum point versus if we have concave down like a frown, your vertex is going to be the maximum point. 
Which brings us to our final step, step eight. So step eight asks us to find the domain and the range. So with the domain, we want to keep in mind a quadratic is a polynomial function. So there's no domain restrictions. X can be any real number our little hearts desire. However, when it comes to the range, we want to keep the y component of the vertex in mind. 